So we're thinking, oh yeah, it's just conference expansion, conference expansion. Well, we're starting to come up against some limitations on that because conference expansion, again, it operates on some understandings and many of those understandings are starting to fray at the edges. What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master Football back at it again. Happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to be updated on everything, college football, pro football, Madden, EA college football, NFL draft, anything related to American football, hit that red subscribe button. You will not be disappointed. Also hit the like button too. Okay, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys. If you guys were there yesterday, I really appreciate it. Again, go check out. I had a past live stream last night going over. Again, appreciation for the 1,000 subs. We are starting to do our thing over here. Got some cool things coming. Like I said, I'm probably going to be adding in some sort of Twitter Blue subscription here. Long-form videos on Twitter. Also going to be on YouTube. Going to go concurrently that way. However, we're not talking about me today. We're talking about what I think is going to happen in conference realignment. So we were talking about, it used to be, and again, it's probably the situation where like, you know, it's global warming. Oh, no, 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 it's not global warming. It's climate change. Or well, was it conference expansion? No, 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 now it's conference realignment. I do know that Texas and Oklahoma were expansionary moves, you know, to uh, Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC, USC and UCLA to the Big Ten. Those are expansionary moves. However, I'm telling you, there is a particular language of the fact that it's gone away from expansion to realignment. I think a big reason why is because we potentially found some limits there. I want to go to an article we had previously, a couple years ago, that came out here that was talking about a scenario, and I'm going to let you know what I think of it. Let's get into that article real quick. So here we are on fansided.com, and it says, uh, again, Ryan K. about one year ago, and again, that could be one year in you know, nine months, could be one year in two months. Anyways, it says Big Ten football options for expansion to 16, 18, 20, or 24 teams. These were serious discussions that were happening back then. We're like, oh my gosh, well, we see the fact that, you know, Texas and Oklahoma are going over here. So what's the Big Ten going to do? Blah, blah, blah. You see the fact that Adam Rittenberg basically said here that the Big Ten can expand to 16, 18, 20, or even 24 schools sooner than later. If Adam Rittenberg from ESPN is correct, here are some Power Five schools that are AAU members that could potentially get invitations and accept it. Uh, an invite to the Big Ten Conference. From the SEC, he had Texas A&M, uh, Missouri, Vanderbilt, ACC at UNC, Duke, North, uh, Virginia, Georgia Tech, and then Pac-12. He's got these two right here at the top. That would be prophetic because eventually those would be eventually invited to the Big Ten to compete with the fact that the SEC was at 16 teams. And now the Big Ten is going to go 14 to 16 teams. So that article came out, again, roughly a while ago. It was right around that Texas-Oklahoma time. So we're thinking, oh, yeah, it's just conference expansion, conference expansion. Well, we're starting to come up against some limitations on that because conference expansion, again, it operates on some understandings, and many of those understandings are starting to fray at the edges. I say that to reference Greg Sankey, what he's talking about, their expansion from a nine-game conference schedule to a ten, excuse me, from an eight-game conference schedule to a nine-game conference schedule. He's... A little reluctant about that. So over here on Brett McMurphy's Twitter page, and again, he says a couple different things here. First thing he says here is, SEC Commish Greg Sankey, if decision on eight or nine SEC games is money-driven. He says, money follows. It doesn't lead. When all you do is chase money, you make a lot of bad decisions. But then he also said here that he uh, asked if he hopes that a decision will be finally made this week at the SEC spring meetings regarding whether to stay at eight or increase to nine SEC games in 2024. He says, I'd prefer to not to continue to circle the airport. I continue off of that because we're going to go into this point here. He has this, uh, Brett McMurphy has this tweet about Greg Sankey saying, the benefits of the nine-game SEC schedule schedule is an opportunity to play secondary rivalries every year instead of every other year. Those are huge games. As an example, those games would be Tennessee and Alabama. I know this last year was incredible, even though the first time that Tennessee had beaten them in about 15 years, something like that. Also includes Auburn and Georgia, two of those cross-divisional games. You don't get to play that often, so you want to make sure you can incorporate them, them more. Those are secondary rivalries as opposed to like, you know, the Egg Bowl or the Iron Bowl or something like that, where those are primary rivalries. He continues on here that uh, he mentioned the amount of passion the league at games draw he said the decision will not be money driven and the league uh, at the forefront of college athletics does not stand still i ooh, i'm telling you the big 10 and the sec are still kind of going out and you know low key at each other he says that say he did not say he favored a nine game sec schedule but he made a very compelling case for the sec to increase from eight to nine league games in 2024 so with that expansion, and not even so much with that expansion from 8 to 9, just the fact that they're discussing it right now, we always thought we're going to see 18, 20, 24, 32 teams in a conference. 
And unfortunately, there's many limitations with that. The first one is that you can't fit that many games into a schedule. You can't play 25 games, okay? If there's a 32-team conference, what they want to do is whenever you're added into a conference, they want to make sure that they can incorporate you and have you play more games there. And the really cool thing about a 14-team conference, uh, 14 team conference, the ACC has it themselves, is they have their three guaranteed rivals every single year. So again, so there's four teams that includes you and the three rivals that you play. And in addition, you have 10 remaining games. You split those. So you play everybody every two, everywhere, every four, and you get to play eight game conference schedule every single year, have four non-conference games. So with that, that's with a 14 team conference. When you get to a 16 team conference, the math starts to get a little fuzzy around, you know, having only eight game conference schedule. If you have a nine game conference schedule, that works out perfectly because you're going to have four teams, you and then three guaranteed rivals, and then you have 12 remaining teams five and two more anyways so you cut those in half six and six so three plus six so you play everybody every two years you play at everybody's place every four years that's the perfect math however the sec is like oh, i don't really know this i guarantee you this is a conversation they're having oh well you know our schedule is really hard we don't want to have any more extra losses and get us out of some potential playoff spot, something like that. Again, you do, everybody's out there. I love you some SEC football. They do a great job out there. However, we all know about SEC crap week. Oh, it's because of non-conference games at the end of the season. Blah, blah, blah. No, I think we, we kind of know that you guys are like, eh, what if we just put a nice easy one here at the end? And again, you're thinking, they're, they're probably cognizantly thinking about that. Might not be in the forefront of their brains, but at the back of their brains, they're probably like, mm, do we really want to have another SEC game to go through? Remember here, and again, Alabama is a very, very great program. This last season, they had five true away games. Now, again, they still, they were four in one of those away games. They lost one away game. They lost at Tennessee, blah, whatever. However, in those five away games, they were one and four against the spread. They underperformed in every single game. True away games are hard. And again, I think that's the reason why they're like, well, eight's nice. Uh, you know, if we have nine, we might every once in a while have, you know, five true road games. A year. We can't have that. So again, you're seeing that's the limitation they're coming up against. However, I am also seeing the fact that the Big 12 is starting to think like, well, we've got 12 right now. But if we get to 16, we can do some more things with our TV markets. We can do some more things with travel partners, this and that. Again, it's starting to see that that 16 number seems to be pretty nice. Everybody's trying to get to that point. Here we are with Ross Dellinger on SI.com. He says, sources, the Big 12 continues to talk expansion with Gonzaga ahead of league meetings. And again, he goes through a couple of things here. So in the fact that Gonzaga and also UConn have been listed in their conference realignment, uh, you know, talks out there. So Gonzaga doesn't have a football program, you know, but UConn does. UConn plays currently their sports in the Big East right now, and then they play their football as an independent. So football integration would be pretty simple. However, the basketball integration, there's an argument that do you want to remove them from that league? That's actually a pretty good league. Do you want to go to the Big 12? The Big 12 has some good basketball too. Do you want to be flying across the country? There's lots of questions they have with that. However, what is not a question here is that Brett Yormark, Big 12 commissioner, he says that and other league's officials continue to deep discuss with the Zags, as well as with the school's consulting firm, Navigate, sources tell Sports Illustrated. Navigate is a data-driven company that is assisting Gonzaga in a potential move from the West Coast Conference into a Power 5 league. So he's talking about this because the Big 12 wants to expand out into that fourth window. The fourth window for all of you uninitiated are those West Coast time zones. So again, this might not help out in football per se, but if can you imagine Baylor visiting Gonzaga or Gonzaga visiting Kansas or something like that, or even UConn visiting K uh, Gonzaga in a conference game would absolutely be nuts. And again, another thing too with that is that they, the Big 12 is at 12 members right now. The SEC is at 12, or the SEC is at 16 for 2020. Four. The Big Ten is at 16 for 2024. I'm thinking that, again, so the, the Big 12 this next season is going to be 14. They'll lose those two. Might add a couple more from there. Remember, that fourth window, get to 16. That's what we're probably thinking about right there. Now, there's a couple of things in here that are absolutely infuriating. The first one here is they're talking about Gonzaga. That makes a lot of sense. UConn does too. San Diego State is talked about from the, uh, first of all, I think they're just going after or talking about San Diego State from the Big 12's perspective just to slight the Pac-12. You know they're doing that thing right now. And the fact that they're naming UNLV is an absolute joke. Why? that's you're not a serious conference if you take UNLV over Boise State I don't even care if I'm not a fan I'm with it with Gonzaga I'm with it with UConn I'm even with it with San Diego State you are not serious about sports if you add UNLV they are not a good asset it's a terrible idea don't do it you you are not serious if you do that but yeah 
Continuing on here. Basically, here's the deal. They talk about the pro rata clause for adding group of five teams as opposed to adding, you know, power five teams. This is all all this speculation right here. I do think what's going to happen is the Big 12 will eventually get to 16. However, what they're hoping for is they're hoping that the Pac-12 falls apart. They get some of those four corner schools, bring them on over. Easy integration. Colorado was in the Big 12 before, and now they'll be back again. However, what if they don't? Do they add G5 schools? I do think that Brett Yormack has painted himself into a picture here that he really needs to add something because there's been so many talk about Brett McMurphy and, and you know, Endeavor and this rumor and that rumor. And there's a, a meeting over here with the Regents. And then are they hiring a treasurer? Or are they trying to go to the Big 12? There's so many things that are going on with that. There's so many rumors. There's Oh, there's if there's that much smoke, there's got to be fire. It could be just a bunch of steam. I do think, though, for sure. The Big 12 is looking at expanding to 16 teams because you look at the abilities with the SEC, you look at the you know the abilities with the Big 10, what they're able to do with their conferences, how many good games they can get, how many like regionalities they can have. I know that you know USC and UCLA are kind of a goofy fit out there, but they got so much money they'll be able to overcome that whole situation. So again, we see the fact that at the SEC, eight games, nine games, and eh, right around there, we see the fact nobody really wants to expand beyond 16. We want to get to 16 if we're the Big 12. But that's where it kind of stops. And remember here, my dear friend Joel Clapp, I made a video about this. It was a very popular video. Some of, the, some of the people in the comments were not very happy with me. What they basically said, again, I agree with Joel Clatt here, where we were talking about conference expansion, expansion, expansion. Who can we add? Which markets? Which this? Which that? Bop, bop, bop. We're eventually going to get to a point. Who can we drop? And again, I don't think it will be a direct drop. I, I, I don't think that Purdue has any risk of getting it kicked out of the Big Ten. More than likely, I think that there's going to be a separation of football. The Big Ten Academic Alliance is is amazing. It's I think it's it's only like you know a half a percent of the universities in the country. It's one fifth of all of the uh, engineering degrees. It's an incredible institution out there. However, football is starting to act a little bit different than the rest of the sports out there. I would not be surprised if there's some sort of a separation of football that wouldn't necessarily affect these conferences, you know, especially from like like you said, academic alliances and this and that. But I'm telling you, something's going to happen eventually. It will probably happen after the ACC's deal is done and it cleans its way. We're talking probably in the 20, early 2040s or something like that. But conference realignment is not going to stop when the Big Ten and the SEC get to 16. And I don't honestly believe, I do not believe that Rutgers is safe. I don't think that Missouri is safe. I don't think that Indiana is safe. I don't think that Illinois is safe. I don't think that Purdue is safe. I don't think that Vanderbilt is safe. None of them are safe in their conferences going forward, but we'll see what happens in here. There's lots of things that can happen. The only limitation is the imaginations of the people in charge. So you think about the SEC, they're talking about eight conference games, maybe go to nine, but that's the limitation you're running up against in that situation there. You also see the Big 12. The Big 12 is like, well, we got to get ourselves to 16. The old conversations about conferences getting to 20, 24, 30, 32 teams, there's a limitation with how many teams that can play in those games and how many different time slots you can fill. I really don't see those super conferences happening anymore. I also think that, again, the, the power to separation of football here and there, I, I, I don't want to talk about that. All I want to talk about is the fact that we're starting to see there's some restrictions here. That maybe we expanded a little bit too much, a little bit here. Who could we potentially drop? Joel Klatt has brought that up himself. So we're coming up against some limitations in conference realignment. We'll see what happens eventually. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for being here. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all that. I really appreciate it. That's it for me, guys. I'll see you guys later. I am out.